Hey guys, konnichiwa. My name is August Holdrich, and right now I live in Kagawa Prefecture. Kagawa is known for its sanuki udon noodles, but there are also three other foods that it's famous for. And today, I'm gonna show you what those three delicious foods are. Let's take a look. Number one, olive fed wagyu beef. Kagawa's one and only Wagyu beef, olive beef. Kagawa is the first place they successfully cultivated olives in Japan, and it still leads with 95% market share. So after they create the olive oil, they use the dried pulp as feed for olive beef. My favorite way to eat it is as yakiniku, or grilled meat. And so that's what we're gonna try today. Let's dig in. So you can see they have the English menu in addition to the Japanese menu back over there, which is really great if you're from out of town. Uh, I really wanted to eat the olive beef, so we're gonna try an assortment of these uh, famous dishes. So this, like the skirt, the harami, the short rib, or the karubi, and the loin, or the rosu. And let's see how it turns out. Oh, wow. That looks incredible. So this is the uh, sauce and the pepper and salt for the steak. And this is for the rest of the meats that we're gonna use. Wow, this is a lot of beef. And it looks amazing. I mean, just look at this. I mean, this is incredible right here. And I cannot wait to try it. So let's get grilling. Let's see how it tastes. Itadakimasu. Guys, that is really good olive beef. Like, Wow. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's so tender and it's so chewy. I don't know how they do it. One of the good things about olive beef is because it has that olive pulp content in it, it also has what's called oleic acid, which is really healthy for you and also means the meat doesn't oxidize as quickly. So that's why it's won a lot of major awards in Japan for the quality of its beef. Hey, uh, so you can see I eat this every day for breakfast. No, just kidding. Uh, this is the first time I have ever seen an olive beef steak this big. But luckily the staff is here to help me out, so hopefully I won't mess things up. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's try our hand at this steak. Ooh, ooh, here he goes. Oh wow, listen to that sizzling, okay. All right. So we're gonna change it while it's still rare, and then we can cut it up. Itadakimasu. 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 It's really, really good, so I totally agree. Like it's, it really melts in your mouth really easily. You know, like with the high fat content. The nice thing is you can cut it up, you can sort of fry it to your liking. So I'm trying one of them more rare. I'm gonna try one of them a little more well done. Guys, that is some really good beef. Wow, that was a really good meal, not gonna lie. I may have had some help in finishing it all off. We have two more Kagawa specialties that we're gonna eat today, so let's head off to the next place. Number two, Olive Yellowtail. Hey guys, so our next stop for today is a seafood restaurant that is only three minutes away from the main fish market right here in Takamatsu. This restaurant's specialty is that it uses the best catches of fish from that day to create a menu of different seafood cuisine that are sort of home style cooked. The menu's always changing, so today let's see what we get. All right, what shall we do today? Well, Kagawa Prefecture is really famous for their yellowtail, so let's go ahead and try this yellowtail bowl. Wow, so the decor in this place is really something. So you can see they have the old wooden fishing boat right here and the fishing banners and also the octopus pots on the wall. So the decor was created, uh, it was sort of cooperation between the fishing vendors and fishers in this restaurant. So it really pays off. Wow, this looks really good, good presentation. I can't wait to eat it. So what I've been eating here is olive yellowtail. And just like the olive beef that we just had, olive yellowtail is a specialty of Kagawa Prefecture. And what makes olive yellowtail special is that the fish is raised on a feed uh, made from olive leaves. And so this means that the fish doesn't have too strong of a smell, and even though it has a good fat content, you don't feel really weighed down after you eat it. So 
The best seasons for eating olive yellowtail are in the fall months or in the winter months. So as you can see, Kagawa Prefecture has a lot to boast of when it comes to fish and meat. So let's keep on eating. And now that my belly is full, we're gonna go off to one more good restaurant on the shopping arcade. So let's go and find out. Number three, Honetsuki Dori, chicken on the bone. Next, we're gonna be doing a food that is beloved in Kagawa by people young and old. It's the one and only very famous Honetsuki Dori, or chicken on the bone. So let's go up these stairs and find out what it's like. So as you can see, they have the Japanese menu here, but they can also provide you with English and Chinese too, if you need it. So the thing you have to know about chicken on the bone is there's two types. There's the oyadori, which is the older bird, and that's known for having a more chewy texture. And then there's the hinadori, which is the younger bird, which is known for being more succulent and tender. So normally in Japan, when you need to get the waiter's attention, you put your hand up and say, sumimasen. But the fun thing about this restaurant is, I get to use a little red flag while I do it. Sumimasen! A one young chicken, wakadori hitotsu, and one older chicken. Uh, they say it goes really well with beer, so I'm gonna get one medium mug of beer. That's everything. Whoa, here it is. This is the young bird. And this is the older bird. So real quick before I dive into this delicious looking food. So you can either cut it with the scissors into smaller pieces so that they're easier to manage with your chopsticks, or you can go ahead and bite straight into it. The only thing is you need to use napkins because the oil is really hot. So let's go ahead and dig in. So you can see I have the napkin wrapped around here, so let's dig in. That was really good. So what sets Honetsuki Dori chicken on the bone apart is that the outside of the skin has a nice crisp texture, but the inside is great and juicy. So, and each store that you go to will have their own special blend of salt, pepper, and other spices that they put onto it, which always pairs really well with the swig of beer, so. Really good. Wow, now that was a good meal. So today we've tasted Kagawa's top three specialties, but there's one other extra specialty that I wanted to show you guys. And because it's kind of sweet, we can think of it as our dessert. So let's go check it out. Bonus, an mochi zoni. So we've already had the three big ones today, but this last one we're gonna eat is a special dessert treat called an mochi zoni. So zoni is a soup that's traditionally eaten in Japan on New Year's, but Kagawa has its own twist on it with something called Ammochi, which is pounded rice cake with sweet red bean paste in the middle. And it's really delicious and can only be found here in Kagawa. So let's dig in. Itadakimasu. There we go. It'll have that nice stretch to it. And you can see on the inside, it has the ankle or the red bean paste, which is actually pretty sweet, but it works together really well with the salty broth, believe me. And it's a flavor that you can really only find in Kagawa. These are the soyu mame. Soyu mame, or literally translates as like soy sauce beans, um, but they're famous from Shodoshima Island. Uh, they're one of my favorites. Um, sometimes you can get them at udon noodle shops too. Wow, today was a full day and I am very satisfied. So feel free to check out any of the restaurants and shops that we showed you today. Kagawa has a lot of great places to find great food that you can only get here in Kagawa. So if you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you wanna see more upcoming content about Kagawa Prefecture, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.